There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent, be still, and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my StreamYard virtual studio with an amazing man by the name of Dr. Stephen Bizal. Stephen, how are you, brother? I'm doing well, Jay. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. It's an honor to have you. Uh, so I am uh, very connected to this amazing man now. So I may call him doctor. I may call him Stephen. Who knows where this is going to go in this conversation. But uh, let me give you guys his bio. And by the way, backstory, him and I met at the Biohacker Congress in Las Vegas two weeks ago, or close to two weeks ago now. And literally i didn't know who he was i was at a booth that he had just been like as i said i was in his energy trail and his book was on the table and i picked it up and i opened it right to a page and i was like oh my god who is this like my wife monica was getting you know as i sold sold by some technology and and the woman that was running the booth came up to me and she's like sir can i help you and i was like yeah who is this what is this guy and she's like oh he's here i'm like what and so he was leaving the conference, but I, you know, just to share, I opened to a page, you know, which about his book, which was like right in line with the stuff that I was about to lecture about, which was like two hours from that point in time. But anyway, long story short, he's here today in very short notice. Let me give you guys his bio. So again, Dr. Stephen Bazal, he is a doctor of chiropractic. He's an author. He's a speaker. He's an educator. He's a healer. He's a very high conscious brother. Um, but he's author of his book, which is the one that I picked up, which is called the optimal life, empowering health, healing, and longevity. It's very advanced. Yep. It's absolutely amazing book. Uh, I am about 65% of the way through the book, but like I said, I opened right up to like one of the most profound points of the book, but anyway, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let him promote that at the end of this podcast. But, uh, again, he is an innovator in the field of human potential and human performance, he founded the first executive health and fitness coaching company, which was called Personalized Health and Fitness in SoCal in 1981, as he, as he says the story, in Orange County, after he helped a very close friend who was obese lose 100 pounds. Uh, in his book, The Optimal Life Empowerment Program, Wellness, Lifestyle, Medicine, Healthy Aging, it's the first wellness course approved for continuing, edu continuing education in California for both medical and chiropractic health professionals, which is amazing. Uh, his book, The Optimal Life, again, was an online course also, which I have the link. I think it's www.psychceu.com, approved for CE credits for psychologists, LMFTs, which are licensed marriage and family therapists, <laughs> RNs, and social workers in California, Texas, Ohio, and Florida. He also founded wellnesscoachinginstitute.com in 2009, wow, at the, at the beginning of the last crash. The first university approved wellness certification program in the U.S. for health insurance and human resource professionals. By the way, the next crash is incoming, thought-provoking, and always entertaining. America's Wellness Go-To Guy will inspire you to take charge of your life by helping you connect the dots to create optimal health and the optimal life. So again, this guy is a legend. I want to get into the points. I do. I want to get into the points of your book. Um, and, and let me just say, like I said, you know, like the Jay Campbell podcast today is all about connecting with beings of resonance and beings of coherence. And Dr. Bazal is one of them. And again, I'll just say, and I'll let him promote the book at the end of the show, but get this book. I'm actually going to be writing an email about your book to my list and my audience very, very soon to, you know, to, to allow them to understand the profound nature. But let me just ask you, cause I'm doing this a lot on my podcast now, before we just jump into the points. Okay. Today is the last day of the Ides of March, 2022. Yeah, March. And yeah. we find ourselves in a very precarious situation, right? Like guys like you and I are not paying attention to the news. We tuned that out a long time ago, but you know, for the average person who's like going through the world today, like what would your, give me a prognosis. Like where is the third dimension going two to five years from now? And then also like just kind of your advice to people 
to really separate so much of the negative noise in the background. Well, <laughs> I put you right on the spot, dude. Geez, a prognosticator. All right. Uh, let me respond by saying this. All right. A very wise man once told me, Steve, it doesn't matter what anyone else does in the world. It only matters what you do. That's right. All right. And if you're struggling, if, you're, if your people are struggling in any aspect of their life, their personal life, their business life, relationships, family, or, the, uh, or whatever, that's all due to the fact that somewhere along the line, you gave up your power. Yeah. All right. And so you're buying into other people's stuff and other people's junk. And the way most of the world works is that we're, you know, the human population is, is, and this is ever since the beginning of time has been exploited, you know, for the benefit of the few and you don't even realize it, you know, based upon conditioning. So yeah. if you have more power than you realize, all right, but you have to start asking yourself, what's the truth about what's going on? Because you'll right. never be able to get to where you want in life or to turn your life around or to get to be at peace unless you can do that. So the, the, the world might spiral in a worse direction than it is right now. All right. And you, you can hear indications on either side of it. But again, what I'd like to do is just let you know is that it, it doesn't matter what anyone else does. It only matters what you do because you have more power than you realize to influence. And the power of love is always more powerful than the, the, the energy of love is more powerful than the energy of hate, anger, fear, etc. cetera. So. Beautiful. Yeah, no, beautifully stated and well said. Um, that's absolutely true. You know, there's two states of consciousness, fear and love. And every day you wake up and you have a choice. And I, you know, without getting into where the world has gone in the last two years, unfortunately, those who are constrained to the narrative of popular culture, the mainstream news, media, uh, what I call it, have been, you know, pushed, you know, metaphorically, you know, into the corner, right? Like fear consciousness has caps captured many souls. I mean, you know, you know this. All it takes is going around the world right now and going out and seeing the people that are still wearing two masks or face shields in the bright sunlight. You know, imagine or or they're know, in the car by themselves with the windows by themselves up. with their windows rolled up. Right. So imagine. Right. I mean, you know, we laugh, right? But like, this is something that like it's most serious people stuff for them. Yeah. Right. Most people can't. I mean, no, I laugh too, dude. I mean, I put tweets and Instagram posts up about stuff, but like. At the end of the day, it's like really recognizing, you know, without condemnation or judgment that these people are in a bad place, Doc. I mean, they're in a bad place. Like to actually, I mean, you know, again, I, for me, it's like. They're fearful. Yeah, you hit your If you come head, outside okay? in the sunlight <laughs> in a beautiful day, let's say where you and I live in Southern California and you're wearing a mask. There's something actually wrong with you. Like you are now in a state of awareness that is literally so pushed into fear that you really can't see things. You're not conscious. Let's put it that way. You're, you're truly almost not conscious because you are so fear-based because of the conditioning, the entrainment, the indoctrination, whatever you want to call it. But it's, it's, it's really weird because like, you know, it's hard to, for you and I, it's simple to understand this, but for people that are in that same place of consciousness, it's hard for them to get out. Well, it's the, you know, it's that old adage metaphysically that two energies of different quality cannot right. exist at the same place at the same time. So when you're preoccupied with fear, right. there's no place for the love to come in. There's no place right. for the truth to come in. Right. Right. I mean, it's really it really boils down to some very simple toggle switch, you know, yes, no, black, white, you know, what's the truth kind of a thing. And people don't ask. They don't ask why you're not taught to think anymore. When you go through school, when you go through university, you just learn to regurgitate other people's stuff, just hoping that they're giving you accurate information or or you ask the screen for the answer. <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, my kids, the young kids of today, Doc, I mean, these kids have no curiosity, no critical thinking. It's not taught. They, you know, I mean, and look, you know, 
and, I, and I've spoken about this, but you know, it's, it's good for you and I to have this conversation right now, because if you and I come with compassion and, you know, and, 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 you know, compassionate, sensitive eyes, and we go from their perspective, you know, they'll say to you again, the, the conscientious of them, why would we want to, when it's so simple, we have the answer, you know, yeah, yeah. why would I want to struggle? Why would I want to work hard? Why would I want to, you know, go through the battles or whatever, you know, when I can have click, it's here. Well, see yeah, what they don't, they, what they don't realize is what you know and what you learn first time around with your body. And is like, you get, you got to stress the muscle physically. Exactly. Well, you also have to stress the mental muscle, the spiritual muscle and the emotional muscle. Right. And we're not taught that we're not in environments where people aren't talking to their kids the way you and I are talking right now. Right. It no. just doesn't happen. Husbands and wives don't talk about this stuff, you know, so it's what, totally do you, true. what do you expect? And, but here, here, here's, what's interesting about that. Despite the fact that we have this many people in fear and this many people in chaos and this many people that are confused, they're still doing the best they can. That's exactly right. You know, and it, you got to ask yourself, you know, what what's missing here? But they don't even question that. So the kind of work, the truth is, Jay, the kind of work that you and I do is there's only a select few. You know, when I say a select few, you know, it goes back to that. And again, I'm not a biblical scholar. Right. But, you know, the uh, many, you know, the narrow uh, gate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Many are called, but few are chosen. Yes. It's and that's true. not us. It, it's just that, you know, who's showing up in your life and who's showing up in my life are the folks that are on that same path that we're on and have been on. And maybe, you know, we're maybe just a little bit of, uh, uh, further ahead of, you know, chopping wood and carrying water than they right. may be. But, uh, you know, if they're asking the right questions, you and I are there to help. Exactly. And, you know, I'll, again, I'll, I'll just give a couple, you know, names, Hawkins, Walter Russell, Neville Goddard, you know, I was talking about Joseph Benner, you know, they all talk about that. We're all on the same path. Yeah. And we're all walking back to quote unquote perfection. You know, Walter Russell says the journey begins, you know, at the base mm -hmm. of the jungle, you pop out of the womb, you're now traumatized. You're like, holy shit, I'm not in the amb amniotic sac anymore. And now I got to go back to the top of the mountain. And as you know, the, the path to the top of the mountain, maybe who knows how many lifetimes, Yeah. who knows how many bodies, right? Like, but that's but here's the, the beautiful thing about being born human is yeah. that you have the power and the ability to be able to change that and, you know, change whatever karma that is in exactly. the past. So you don't have to reincarnate and deal with the same problems again. And again, quick question for you. Sure. The Hawkins you're referring to is Stephen Hawkins or David Hawkins? David, David. David but I mean, okay. I'm familiar with Stephen Hawkins too, or whatever was Stephen Hawkins. <laughs> well, let me, let me, let me share, let me share this one thing. The, because um, uh, I've read a bunch of it. I'm very familiar with his work. Sure. The I was going to hear him talk in Sedona in the early days before he, before he got picked up by uh, Nightingale Conant. All right. Before he no. went dark and now his entire company is bad news. They, they you know they go after people if you promote his work on on YouTube. Yeah, well, let me let me share this one thing. With Here's you. the story to, to confirm it. OK, go, go. All right. The uh, um, he t the one of the things that he said, and this is very profound. All right. If your people don't walk away with anything else, the thing about power and giving up your power. One of the things he said is he goes, you don't need a guru. Right. All right. Because the road to enlightenment is basically three things. Number one is to be kind at all. Be kind to all that exists. Yes. All right. And I like to add something to that beginning with yourself. Right. Which goes back to your point. All right. Love and trust number, yourself. Right. Number two is. See the beauty in all things, beginning with yourself. And number three is be willing to be forgiving and right. to embrace humility. Yes. You don't need a guru. Yeah, no, it's nobody can do nobody can do your healing for you. It's absolutely true, man. Nobody can do the hard work. You have to do it yourself. It's and beautiful. I think in this day and age, you know, with what you were referencing there about, you know you know, go to Mr. Phone, yeah, dude. You know, go to Mr. Google to do that is people Dr. Are on hard work. All right. They're, they're like, well, yeah, let me look it up. You know, how do I get to spirituality here? What, what is, you know, what's strategy? What do I do on day one? What do I do on day two? <laughs> and ask me the same thing, you know, and it's just like, whoa, I said, you just don't get it. 
You just don't doc, care. Doc, doc, come on, doc. There's got to be a six week boot camp. <clears throat> yeah. Well, that. <laughs> you know, if, I, if I could, ex well, and I found myself in it on occasion going, you know, I could explain it to you, but you wouldn't get it. That's exactly right. That's literally. I don't, I don't mean that to be malicious. No, I that's mean, absolutely that's like, the best way to say it. Yeah, not you know, not to waste your time, and I'm not going to waste mine. That's actually that's the best way to say. It. You know, there's an, another adage of like <clears throat> those folks because of technology and because of the internet and because there's so much information, it's ubiquitous. And again, if you're a fast reader or learner or whatever, you know, can absorb it. But it's like, so you know the lyrics to the song, but you can't feel the tune. <laughs> I like that. That's like the that. same yeah. thing. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. like. Yeah. You know, I can't remember what book it was I read when I was in my mid 20s about it takes 20 years to become a master. It doesn't matter what you're doing. 20 years of actually applying the principles. 10,000 hours. 10,000 hours, right. But, yeah. but 20 years. Yeah. You, these yeah. young people of today literally are like 20 years, dude. Like I read and watched and did, you know, and took all these courses. It's like it doesn't matter, and so that that but that is the problem. Like you said, is like they really don't have the experiential learning. They have the hacks, the quick summaries. You know, the like you said, Mister well, Google, Doctor Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jay, I'm almost there. I only have forty years into it. <laughs> forty. Yeah. Forty. You have forty okay. years of like getting to a place that you know nothing, right? Well, that's, literally... that's what you find out. There's just so much you don't know. It's just like, oh my god. <laughs> but you know, the, the, the cool thing is though, is you get to a place of awareness when you recognize that it's not our place in this dimension of existence, of experience, you know, whatever consciousness to know, because it's about being. It's not about yeah, doing. Yeah. It, well. And that's why I, that's, you know, in, in our little pre-talk there, I said the, so what's my life about right now? It's, it's every day when I get up, just, and, and this is by intention. This isn't sure. by accident. And I repeat this first thing in the morning, uh, you know, how do I want to show up today? Um, you know, as a natural expression of my essence. And what does that look like? You know, being as loving, as kind, as considerate, as compassionate as generous, as thoughtful, as mindful as I can possibly be with everyone at all times. And can I be a higher expression of myself today than I was yesterday? It's beautiful, man. You know, and That's you, you might use some different words, but exact same essence. We're all doing. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. Like for me, <laughs> for me, the first thing in the morning is just literally laying in bed and feeling my physical body and saying, wow, this is amazing. I, I'm grateful. I'm, I'm literally another day. I've made it. <laughs> and then, you know, and then literally, and then move, but then moving around, right. You know, the emotion, you know, motion creates emotion and then just like sure. feeling like, wow. Yeah. I mean, doc, I mean, like you, I, I, it wasn't until I hit rock bottom at 41 to, before I knew that these things were so critical. And so, you know, I always tell people, you know, getting back to the whole mastery and 10,000 hours and, you know, 40 years, the ancient Egyptians didn't even allow an initiate to attempt the, you know, schools, you know, d d d until they hit 40. You couldn't even apply. Well, see, that's <laughs> and funny. then it was yeah, 1%, you... right? Like could get through the initiatory practice to, to become an initiate. So it's like, it's mind blowing that, you know, now with technology, people feel like they have a right, you know, I deserve because of what I did this and this, but you're right. It's, it's all experiential knowledge and it's, it's like your whole life to know, yeah, like you, yeah. you don't know anything. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are go to TOT decoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. Let's talk a little bit about your book. Um, who is it for? Who is it not for? I mean, I mean, I, I want your answer. I, I speak, but I mean, like, who, who is it? Who is it for? And who is it not for? All right. The perfect, perfect segue. 
Um, l- l- let me put it into context. I never set out to write a book. Yeah. All right. What it amounted to is the, you know, like you, I come from a pretty extensive athletic background. Sure. Uh, I came out to California in 76 to train for the 80 Olympics. I mean, so that's right. the level of training I was at. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, so, you know, I already had a, a feel for what the human body was, et cetera, et cetera. After helping this guy lose all the weight, um, you know, I think you mentioned that at the beginning. Uh, and that's actually in the foreword of the book was the, his letter to me, thanking me for what I did. And it's asking me to share my knowledge with other people. That was his gift of gratitude. Sure. Right? Um, so I, they, I ended up then at the ripe age of 30, going back to chiropractic school to get Maybe. the chiropractic education. Then I, then I ran uh, I ran a practice for five years from age 35 to 40. And then at 40 is when I hit the wall. <laughs> okay. But what that means is what that journey looked like was what I started doing was just a lot of educating and, and teaching and, and started, you know, one-on-one with the patients that, I mean, hell, I, ha- I had a greater desire for my people to be healthy than they had for themselves. And I yeah. realized that they were coming in many times for the chiropractic, just for the quick fix. Sure. You know, um, so anyways, the, uh, I started doing a lot of speaking, you know, probably just like you did, you know, initially it was whole foods and it's a library and at other doctor's office, 10 weeks of wellness every Wednesday night from seven, sure. to eight o'clock kind of thing for free, for free, for free, for free. Next thing I know I get it. I'm on cruise lines talking about mind, body, medicine, beautiful emotions in your health. And I had all these PowerPoint presentations and some of them I'd create on the uh, uh, on the cruise lines. Yeah. And I'd be on a cruise line where there'd be 3000 people, right? 2000 of them were playing bingo. <laughs> okay. And then 25 would show up in their faces playing bingo. Yeah. Got yeah. It. 25 of them would show up for my first talk 50 for my second talk, you know, on these cruise lines, you've probably been, they have, they have magnificent little theaters that are hold maybe a hundred, 125 yeah. people. Yeah. By the time I did my third and fourth talk, there were you know, a hundred people in the room. Yeah. Okay. So the universe was giving me a message going, eh, you're doing it right. All right. And at the end of every one of these talks, somebody, I would say, open it up for Q and a, and I would say any questions, somebody would go, uh, where can we get your book? And I go, I don't have a book. It was like the the universe going, boom. Yep. Dude, time to write a book. So that's how the book came about. All right. And it came about like that in conjunction with the fact that when, if you came in to see me for a chiropractic problem, which is, you know, headache, neck pain, back pain, and I did an extensive workup on you, you never just had a headache, neck pain, or back pain. There was always other stuff going on. Yeah. Now I had already come from a, uh, an experiential reality of, of this interconnectedness of we're holistic in nature. There's a, mental peace, emotional peace, spiritual peace, as well as the physical, and it's all integrated. All right. And it all expresses itself against each other all the time. All right. So uh, even starting in chiropractic, I had that kind of a background. So when I asked you that question, when I saw what was going on with you, I'd say, Jay, are you aware of how you contributed to the creation of these other problems in your life? And you look at me like deer in headlamp. Huh? All right. Yeah. Who me? And for the longest time, I couldn't figure out why can't these people connect the dots? Right. And so I pondered it and I just kept asking that question and asking that questions. And I went, oh, my God, revelation. Right. It finally came to me. Steve, the reason why they can't connect the dots, they don't even know what the dots are. Exactly. So the talks I was doing and what ended up as the book was my this was my sharing about, okay, these are the dots you need to know. All right. This is this is your owner's manual that if you had come out of the womb, knowing that these are the dots that you need to have some kind of understanding about to create whatever your optimal life could be. This is what it looks like. Yep. So that's how that's how the book came about. All right. It's really about anybody who wants to improve the quality of their life in any way, shape or form. These are the dots. And it doesn't matter whether it's spiritual or relationship or the physical as you know, because it's all connected. Right. All right. If you're missing any one sliver of that, 
all right, and you're not getting the results that you want, it's because there's a missing link there. There's right. a piece of the puzzle that you're just not getting. And my book is probably one of the few that I've seen out there that at a very, very practical and simplistic level, you know, identifies what the dots are, gives you a little bit about why behind them. And then, okay, at the end of every chapter, there's a 10 must knows, which is a summary of the highlights of that chapter, followed yep. by a 10 must do. So it's not only book, it becomes, it can become a working journal. Yeah, it's actionable advice. You know, what I read now too, and I'm like you still, you know, I don't know when I'm going to stop because I get to a place where it's like, I don't need to read anymore. You know, it's more doing. No, yeah, you're right. Yeah. You yeah. Know, more feeling, more being, but then, you know, then something, somebody will send something to me. We're in, I know you know this, but we're in this time right now where the, what I like to call the spiritual energy, central cosmic sun, whatever you want to call it is like washing over the planet. So it's like you go through moments where you're just like, wow. And then something will come and you're like, I really want to learn more about that. Right. And then, oh yeah, 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 yeah. You'll read it and you'll be like, I don't, fuck, I've already read it 20 other times, 20 different ways, said different ways to other people. But it just, I feel like we're just in this amazing time right now. But your book, like actually my books, uh, and by the way, I haven't written anything yet on spirituality. I've just written on, you know, fitness and health optimization. Sure, but all sure. my books are like yours. I have steps at the end of every chapter. Here's what you should have learned in this chapter. Here's the three things that you should do if you truly want to take action, right? Or if you want to make this a part of your life. And that's what I like about yours too. You know, like you said, you have that at the end of every one, you know? So it's like, that, that's how I'm actually writing my book. My wife and I are writing, um, raising your vibration, right? That's, oh, that's the name wonderful. of the book. It's, you know, that, well, especially if you're doing it together, male and female energy coming together. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah, exactly yeah. right. Cool. That's exactly Very right. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, that's how you write a book though. If you, if you truly want to write a book today, I'm in total agreement and alignment with you. You, you give people steps because information overwhelm, as you know, dude, I mean, most people can't even read their emails at this point. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's like, you have to understand that like bits and bytes of content information um, is how you're going to get through to people. So that's, you know, if you, if you truly well, do want to inspire, that's how you do it. Well, that's the other, the other re reason I wrote the book the way I did when it was like, when I got that ping, the universe wants you to write a book, dude, sure. I said, okay, in the idea, what would it be? Looking back over the last, back then, 25 years of my life, what do I understand about the fact that we're holistic in nature? Mm -hmm. All right. And if you remember page 48 or 45, whatever, I have a holistic health model. Mm -hmm. That's a target with the, uh, with the bullseye of the target is a picture of the heart and exactly. stands for spirituality and the energy of love. The next rung out has to do with emotions. The next rung out has to do with your thoughts. You know, are your belief systems accurate and in alignment with the truth about what's going on? And then the, the final rung is the physical piece. What are you doing in that physical space? And the reason why I, I framed it that way was, and how I identified it, have you ever taken a pebble and thrown it into a pool of still water? What do you get? You get ripples. Which way do the ripples go? out yeah they never go in you don't throw the rock in here and then the ripples start over here and then come right. this way and what do the ripples represent the ripples represent a transference of energy through the yeah. entire system yeah. so you take that two-dimensional make it a three-dimensional you have the human body right and so if you're doing all the things you think you're doing right in the physical space and you're still struggling it may be that it's a deeper issue right so that's yeah. half of the half of the paradigm. So that's section one is that's half the paradigm. Here's the other half of the paradigm, Jay, that's in alignment with probably the way you express some of this other stuff is the other way I could describe the, I describe health in the physical body as a natural expression of spiritual, mental, and emotional energy being expressed in the physical in the plane. Okay. That's half of the equation. The other half of the equation is that there are rules to the game of health. These are not rules that you make up or I make up or the medical <laughs> profession makes up, all right, or government makes up, all right? These are what I call the universal principles. Universal principles are spiritual laws and laws of nature. And so having played doctor and, and working intimately with, you know, with thousands of people one-on-one -on -one over the years, it's the other way I could define health was 
health is a natural consequence of being in alignment with spiritual laws and laws of nature. Beautiful. You get that as a natural consequence. Okay. So what I found was that, so what's the disease process? What's illness all about? It's you're either violating spiritual laws right. and or laws of nature, and you don't even know it. Yeah. So the yeah. healing process is all about, to frame it another way, the healing process is all, all about identifying where you may be violating spiritual laws or laws of nature. Because if you don't, and that's why, you know, what's the truth about what's going on? Right. Are you asking the right questions in the right way with the right intention? It's beautiful, man. All right. So that's what healing for me is all about. So those two pieces are the foundation for the book. All right. And then based on that and the health model, you have 10 principles of wellness. And each one of those is, I mean, I just asked the question, what does the body need to be healthy based upon that platform or that foundational understanding? Number one on the top of the list, it, it isn't you need more protein or you need more vitamin D. Number one on the list is you need healthy spiritual energy. Exactly. Right. Is, is you need to have healthy emotional energy. You know, have you dealt with the unresolved emotional business from the past? So Number few three, people, by the way, have done, have done any of that work. <laughs> Don't even know where to turn to even do that work. That's why we have the book. <laughs> a, a starting point. And, and again, let me, it, it's, uh, I'm not smarter than Howdy Doody. There isn't anything in that book that you couldn't get in other places and get from you. All right, as well. But the I just put it together in a, in a very, very simple format. All right. So that it gives you what I call the whole enchilada. Yeah. Yeah. In one place. And that's why I say it's like the Bible. It's like your owner's manual that if you had this book coming out of the womb, you'd stand a chance <laughs> to create the life you want. And if you're again, if you're struggling, is there's pieces of the puzzle that you're missing. And you're just not asking either enough questions or the right questions in the right way. It's beautiful. I mean, like I said, I mean, you, I mean, I, there's a lot of other things I want to talk to you about, but yes, your book is profound. Um, I mean, to what you just said though, like it's so simple, but yet it's so difficult or we make it humans make it so difficult. We really are nothing more than the thoughts that we think right? What tends in mind or what stays in mind tends to manifest. I mean, it literally is a universal law. There is no way around it. You do create your reality. You know, people talk about, is this a simulation? You know, you've got all these like astrophysicists saying it is a simulation and stuff. But I mean, to me, the proof that it's a simulation is the idea that the quantum physics, you know, precept plays the role in that you create your reality through your words and your thoughts and your actions, right? So that proves that it is a simulation because if it wasn't a simulation, it would be a fixed chain. You can't change your reality. You're born into your reality and you're stuck. Now, obviously, as you know, if your mindset is based on lack, limitation, and scarcity, then yes, you are stuck until you overcome that or until you create, you know, through that or integrate the trauma that makes you feel that way. But it is it is pretty interesting when you really just boil it all down to that idea that literally you are nothing more than what you think about yourself. Now, may, may I add to that? Please. All right. Because this is where I found most people get stuck is that is that you are you are absolutely correct but what most people don't realize is they think they're making appropriate and intelligent decisions right all right when they make decisions about their life about their relationships about what they're doing all right but what they don't realize is if you actually go into the the literature of the mind and psychiatry or psychology there's two components of the mind all right there's the intellectual piece which is your conscious mind and that's where you're making all your decisions all right but that only attributes, that's only 10% of it. There's 90% of what influences the thoughts that you think that come from the perceptions that you have about yourself are in your subconscious mind. True. And because they're in your subconscious mind, you're not even aware that you have those misperceptions and negative perceptions about yourself and others that are buried in your subconscious mind that are carried forward from childhood that are influencing what you think you're making intelligent and correct decisions about. 
So that's yeah. why in that in that health model, what's deeper than your your belief systems is what are the perceptions that you started with in life that create to that? Right. You actually just triggered me. And I know you and I were talking about this at when we first met. Yeah. You know, I was talking to you about my mom. And dude, I haven't even told you this. Like it's again, this is the universe. That night she sent an email to all of her kids. And it was like the, you know, she has a master's degree and it was like a five-year-old. It was the musings of a five-year-old. And so it goes back to what you were saying is that we really do all of us. There's no one that can escape this, have developmental disablement at early ages due to things that happen to us, experiences, whatever, maybe uh, trauma no. from emotional or physical abuse, whatever. It doesn't matter, but no, but Jay, Jay, even, uh, okay, no, but let me, let me just take it a layer deeper if I may, yeah. because sure. this, will, this will help your people that are stuck. Okay. Yeah. Is that what most people don't realize is when you come out of the womb, you already have emotional cellular memory. Right. Okay. Right. And here's why from the time one cell goes to two. Right. All right. And through the entire nine months of gestation through the, the entire embryological development, mm -hmm. All right. When we were in our mother's womb, it was 24 seven. We were exposed to her energy matrix. Exactly. All right. And if that energy matrix looked like anger, fear, guilt, shame, sadness, feeling bad about herself, every cell in your body was picking that up. Crazy, man. You know, as well as whatever the energy was on the relationship between our mother and our father. <sighs> okay. So now you come out of the womb and you know, you have children, right? And you yeah. can take an infant and you notice, and an infant, the uh, uh, only experiences the world at a feeling level initially. That's what's beautiful about them. They're so pure, you know, they're, they're in the alpha state. The beta brain hasn't kicked in yet. So that's why, so that's why a baby can go from crying one minute, one second to laughing the next second, back to crying a second. Go ahead, try to do that. Right. <laughs> we have, we have too many filters. All right. So what happens is before the brain ever kicks in, by the time the brain starts to kick in and you start to figure out what's going on at five, six, seven, eight years old or whatever, and you're trying to connect the dots, it's already overlaid on whether the world felt good or it didn't feel good. Right. Right. And that's where all the misperceptions come in. That then the, 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 and what we learn to do as children is to emotionally we create behaviors as children to survive the emotional right. environments we grow up in. Exactly. Yeah. And then we bring that inner child into adulthood. Totally. Without totally. realizing it. <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, it, we're, we're so developmentally disabled. Well, actually one of my uh, mentors regressed me and dude, I've never shared this. I'll share it with you right now. You're bringing it out. But like, I literally was three or four years old. I mean, I can see it. And I was writing on the back of my parents' couch with crayons. And my dad came in and blew up. What are you doing? You don't do that. He didn't beat me. At least I can't remember that he beat me. But like, it was insane trauma. And so... No, but doesn't at three years old, I mean, see, the truth is we all come out as victims because we don't have what you and I have now as adults to deal with anything. Right. You know? Well, and, and the trauma, remember, you know, you're, you're talking at three years old, he's land of the giants and he's screaming at you. I mean, <laughs> what are you going, what are you going to do with that when you're three years old? Dude, I mean, it's mind blowing, but I mean, just when I think of it, talking to you about it, you know it triggers latencies or memories or whatever you want to call it. Like you said, like little spiritual impulses, because you're right. The cells, when you're that pure, you're just a sieve for everything. And your entire life, like you said, you take that developmental disablement, that inner child or whatever with you, you know, into later stages of life. And it triggers or is triggered as you know, Stephen, at various times instinctually. Oh yeah. 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 The cellular memory is there even, and then even once you do the implementations or turn that around, you can still be triggered. But for example, when I say you can still be triggered, but if, if you're willing to do the work, the, how I deal with that in me was I realized that I needed to keep a constant vigilance on what I call my oh, yeah. emotional thermostat. Right. 
And as soon as I felt that emotional thermostat, okay, going into the hot zone, what I learned to do was just stop and go, dude, what's really going on here? Yeah. What's this really true. all, what's really all about? And just mm -hmm. by stopping that process, yeah. it would diffuse the negative energy. All right. So that I wouldn't react. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? If you're looking to use peptides, make sure you go to my number one source, Limitless Life Nootropics. For healing with BPC-157 and TB-500 or fat loss with Ipamorelin, CGC-1295 and AOD-9604 to immunity with TA-1, thymus and alpha-1, Limitless has a huge selection. Go to LimitlessLifeNootropics.com and use my code J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I send you guys tremendous love and light. So last night I was triggered. Same thing. My wife... We just had uh, a new, brand new, really nice washer and dryer installed and put in the house. And before, actually this morning it happened, but before she wanted to like clean up and get it all organized and move on. Cause we have all this technology in this like BS cabinet above our washer and dryer in our laundry room and stuff. And so she's like, I'm going to take it all apart. I'm going to do it. And so, I mean, like I let her do it. And when I went down there, I, I should have waited. It was my fault, but I should have waited for her to finish. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, it really was. But yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I wanted to see, cause like it's all the, 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 the hub for all of the tech in the house. And so I went too soon and, you know, I could see that the wires were all tangled and it was a mess and everything like that. And so she, I was like, when you're done, I want to go and get in there and everything. And so uh, she was like, well, I'll let you know when I'm done. And instead of <laughs> turning around and walking away, like a good spouse, I stayed there and it pissed her off. And she's like, all right, go ahead. And I swear to you, Steven, again, this is just the law of the universe of nature. As soon as I got in, one of the things that were up top on the shelf that she had just put into the wall came down and hit me on top of the head. And it, as it hit me on the head, it started the, as you said, the emotional thermostat, like, ah! but I caught myself. I literally did catch myself in the midst of about to erupt. And then I was like, wait a minute, this doesn't serve me. So it's like, you got to get to a place of like, like you said, the, the constant vigilance of the mind, the ego, the personality, the impersonal, you know, whatever you want to call it aspect of who you are. And then like, you know, put a governor on it. Well, and that was, that was one of the four realizations was, and what you're describing there is you've gotten to the point where you're going to be 100% responsible and accountable exactly. in your life for all your feelings, right. all your thoughts, right. all your words, and all your actions. Right. You can't move forward in life unless you do that. That's exactly right. And I'll even quantify it further. Most of the time, you can either uh, react out of fear or you can choose to respond out of love. Right. Right. And that's not easy to do. I mean, you know, the perfect example of that is you're driving down the street. You just had this amazing morning. You're, you know, you did your mindfulness. It was a meditation and introspection. You sat in nature for an hour, whatever. You're in perfect Zen. And now you're in your car going to work and some crazy person <laughs> cuts you off, almost kills you, is MFing you, you know, and you're like looking <laughs> over, you know. Attempting to you know still drive the car now now the person who is completely you know guarding the hen house with that powerful spirit is literally looking over and saying oh wow you must be having a bad day man I'm sorry let me I'm sending you love right but the person who's you know reacting out of fear motherfucker pull over and I was that guy right like in my thirties and forties like I mean We've all been that guy. into my early forties yeah. So no, I, mean, I was yeah, yeah, probably like you. I was very aggressive when I was younger. And that was yeah. all anger. That was yeah, all course. anger. All right. But, but, but it's all fear, right? It creates anger, sure. but it's sure. all some form of fear or lack. Yeah. But it's like it's mind blowing to get you able to get to a place. And again, Hawkins says this in his book. The best step, the, the best move is always to never cut anyone off in traffic. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, like, literally, when you get to a place where no matter what happens to you while you're driving on the street, you remain in control, responding out of love, which, again, that's not easy to do, especially in Southern California. You see some crazy well, stuff on the roads. You know, it's funny that you bring that up because the 
what I what I got in the habit of doing now, uh, and actually some time ago, is even if I'm in a hurry, all right, and you know, there's four people at an intersection, or there's somebody walking across the road, or somebody wants to pull in front of me, or whatever. I back off and I wave them in. I wave exactly. them in because me too. Tired. Me too. Me too. Well, the I do that with is, everyone yeah. on the road now. I stop yeah. and go, "Hey, it's cool." And sometimes people are so fear based, they still won't get over. Yeah. <laughs> well, well you're, you're catching them. You're catching them by surprise because of what how they're how they're conditioned. But here's the but here's the other thing that that you just mentioned. What that does if you if you allow other people, if you're gracious and you allow other people to do whatever they're doing. All right. You're actually in charge of the entire situation. Then. You are the energy. You're not putting yourself at risk. That's exactly Physically, right. You're not putting yourself at risk. Yes. You're anything yeah. more intelligent than that from a design standpoint. And there's even a bigger thing. There's, you know, the, the uh, so, so back to, so yes, but let me take it deeper. <laughs> so, so there's an energy transference. Yep. So, yep. so think about this. So like when that person who cuts you off, who's clearly having a bad day and is insane and, you know, doing whatever they're doing, clearly they have a negative situation. They're, they're, they're reacting. If you do send them love and wave at them and smile, you're literally transmuting the dissonant waveform with a resonant and coherent waveform of love. And you transmute that negative energy. Now, people don't really talk about this because it's kind of woo-woo, but it's true. It really is true. And, you know, if you've ever done that, and I know you have, but if you've ever done that, all you have to do is look at the face of the person when they're realizing that you're actually sending them love and all of a sudden their face just drops and they're just kind of all, almost instinctually, they might wave back at you. Oh, yeah, but, yeah. Well, you know, another, the uh, the way I describe that is I've, I did 20 years of management consulting in two areas. Number one was building sales organizations for company. Wow. All right. Or going in like Rambo and doing turnarounds when they just weren't happy with performance. Right. Right. The, or uh, I taught emotional intelligence. That's amazing. Uh, okay. So one, one of the things, uh, how should I describe this? One of the things that I would do, and I just lost my train of thought. That's okay. It'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> that happens sometimes. Yeah, the happens on occasion. Um, we'll move on. If I remember, I'll come back to it. Yep. Well, you were saying you 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 did the corporate training. You did you know Rambo turnarounds, and then the other time you did emotional intelligence. Those were the two things you said specific. If that triggers it. Yeah, but it was before that. Uh, what, what I was going to say before that that I I set it up so nicely with. <laughs> <laughs> it happens, man. It happened on me in a podcast that I did like a week ago. And I was just like, God, I just said it. You know, it's better to just say it. I lost it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens, it happens on occasion. Well, you know, I, I just, the excuse I use is I am so much in the present moment that if I don't stick with the present moment and I move off on a tangent, I lose it. It's beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Now I remember. Now there I you remember. go. All right. All right. And that is the, you know, what you described there, the, how I describe it, because in both those environments, I would usually get pulled into a lot of conflict resolution once people experienced me, you know, doing other things with people. And for me, it was all about just showing up and being able to mirror back to people that they're more mm -hmm. lovable than their perception of themselves is at that moment. Beautiful. How I describe it. All right. Because I was usually... You know, if you're if you brought me in as a as a Rambo consultant is because the message you were sending to your people is I'm not happy with the way you're performing. Right. You know, so they didn't look at me as an ally. <laughs> right. You're the adversary. Yeah. And I would come in with a different energy dynamic than what they were accustomed to. And I never beat on people. I you know, it, it was always the what I learned to do was uh take and separate. You know, what I understand about the human being and intimacy and the struggle people have and what their lives were like from whatever the job was. And I realized a long time ago when anybody was not performing uh, or doing anything that was not healthy for themselves or for anyone else around them, you know, or the animals or whatever is at a very, very deep level. That person doesn't feel good about themselves. Right. Sometimes somebody's misbehaving or malbehaving. 
right. at a very fundamental level. It just, you know, and, and I'm just using different words to describe the same thing that you're describing. Right. Lack of love and yeah. trust of self. Yeah. 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 So I mean, it's all, it's a, but, but I mean, Stephen, I think we really do. I think all of us, especially the achievers, especially the people that are really, you know, high vibration, driven, determined, you know, idealistic, who want to go out and make it a, a, an impact in the world. We all have at some point imposter syndrome. You know, we, there's a part of us that just doesn't feel enough. You know, it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, where it comes from. Well, that's yeah. what all the, you know, and I describe myself as an achievaholic, right. you know, when I was younger right? and they, you know, from an athletic standpoint, I was a, the, I was a gymnast at Penn state and I was a walk on an, on the gym with very little background against guys that were state champions and coming back from the Olympic squad. Wow. And I mean, to the point where the assistant coach, I was there for like two weeks. He walked up to me, he goes, what the hell are you doing here? You'll never make the team. And I was like, yeah, you watch. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. And, and I'm the, I, I made the team and I made, and I competed in every meet that we had. And I was captain of the team the last year. That's then awesome. I came out here in 76 to train for the Olympics. So that was the, you know, you know, that was the, the level of that, yeah. but but what was driving that? Here's what's interesting, what most people don't realize, okay? You look at that kind of drive in our culture, in our society, and you go, oh, wow, that's wonderful. He's success motivated. You know, he's success oriented. He's an achiever, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> that gets all kind of support. Here's what you don't know, okay? I pushed myself so hard out of such a need to prove I was valuable that I yeah. ended up on crutches 18 times. Wow. I ruptured both Achilles tendons once oh. at the same time. I fractured a pelvis once and came back from that to excel. Now that's crazy. So all that all that hyper achieving is an overcompensation. Right. All right. But we learn from that. Right. Yeah. And we can take and we can apply that in a in positive way to help other people. <laughs> it's beautiful, man. That's amazing. Jesus, dude. Do you have um you look fine though. When I saw you walking around, do you have, you don't have a uh, reconstructed hip or anything? No, no, no. Here, let me, I'll, I'll share this one with you. Okay. And you talk about the power of the mind. I want to re reinforce what you said there. My first injury was when I was 16 years old and we had a gymnastic club in high school. And after one of the, our, our little get together meets, I dropped into a split the way a dancer drops into a split and fractured the pelvis. Oh, all right. They had to take me out in, a, in an ambulance of to course. the hospital. And then they put me out for the first two days because of the pain to figure out what was going on. All right. Fortunately for me, they decided because the, the ossification centers in the pelvis hadn't, he hadn't sealed yet. Right. Cause you were still. Growing. All right. Yeah. yeah. The, the orthopedic surgeon at the time, an old German guy who we suspected come from somewhere else. <laughs> said, no, he decided, he knew. decided that not to do surgery because there were always three docs on a consult. The two, wow. the two American docs the wanted to cut, and he said, and he said, no, don't. All right. But here was the aftermath. I remember the going in, you know, as follow up visits with him, with my mom, right? Cause I was 16 years old and two months into it. And I mean, for the next six months I could stand or I could lie down, but I couldn't sit. Shit. Because that's your, the ischial tuberosity is yeah. that bone that if you put your hands under your butt, you'll feel, okay. That's right. where the attachment was. I pulled off a chunk of the bone. Oh. Okay. So anyways, we're in there and like two months into it. All right. He's talking to my mother and he's going, listen, little Stevie's career is athletic career is over. And by the time he's 40 years old, he's probably going to be on crutches, you know, or he's going to have severe arthritis. And I remember, oh. you know what I heard? No effing way, not right. me. This doesn't apply. Exactly. And in four years, I was captain of the, of the Penn State gymnastics team. Amazing. And so, I mean, I mean, think about what I learned from that experience was just what you were talking about, the power of the mind. I didn't buy in. No, right. And it, yeah. but it told me what the other message it said was the magnificence of the human body to be able to heal itself when you're doing the right things. Exactly right. So yeah. I'm sure well, I mean, we, you know, we have these kind of experience, but here's the thing. It's the extreme experiences like that, that you end up overcoming, all right, that become valuable lessons on what we really do have as power mm -hmm. as human beings mm -hmm. to do and create much more than we currently are doing. Well, I mean, to that point, you know, it's a beautiful story, but 
it just proves that we're not these physical bodies and yeah. you're an energy being an infinite ever expanding eternal energy being who has a mind that you know again in the aspect of the divine mind that can create any reality that you want and you created a story that said dude i'm going to be perfectly healthy i'm going to be whole and complete i'm not going to be an invalid i'm not going to have you know this figurement or you know my inability to draw walk or, or or run or any of that stuff. And you created that reality and your body had to fall and snap in line. That's just yeah. how it is. <clears throat> yeah. To this day. And I'm, I'm 69. Wow. Bro, so I'm, you look I'm, amazing. I'm, I'm a little bit past 40. <laughs> but, I mean, it is true though. You really are only as old as you feel. That was one of parts of my lecture that the, the, the body responds to the mind's thoughts. Yep. And if you say that you're healthy, whole and complete and that you're limber and strong and muscular and tone and lean and all those things, you will be. And you're clearly living that now. And so am I. I'm 51. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, when you start Jay, you talking look pretty, about that. Yeah, you man, look pretty man, good for 51, buddy. <laughs> thank you, brother. I mean, I mean, but obviously, I, you know, it's a part of my experience. It's a part of how I believe Lifestyle. and live well, and stuff. And, you know, my wife's 50. It's the same thing. But we live it every day. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, I don't yeah, look at myself as live. old. Yep. You know, and I know you don't either, but it's it's it really you know again we we really do the self talk the story reinforces what we are, and so you know change your mind, change your thoughts, get around you know get you know get away from people who think that they're old. I mean, how many people are you hanging out with that say, "Oh, there, I said it." Probably not many. No. No, not really. No, and it, it, the most of my friends and acquaintances, the are much younger. The right. Jay, I, ha I have two other projects, two other companies that I run. All right, one of them is called Leatherback Gear. We manufacture bulletproof backpacks. Wow! And then we have the Hero Coffee Company, DrinkHero.com. DrinkHero.com, uh, and you're, drink you're the CEO Hero. of both of these companies. I'm sorry. You're the CEO of both of these companies. Uh, president. We'll call the president the and the I'm not the idea guy, but because of That's my awesome, business man. background, my business partner is a is a son of a guy I went to chiropractic school with. Wow. His name is Mike, and he was in the Secret Service. And Mike and I have done a lot of adventure stuff together. Um, and when he came up with these ideas, and we've done a lot of a lot of smaller projects, he said, you know, I'm kind of like adopted dad, you know, and he he I consider him my adopted son. How, so has he like my age? Is like in his forties, fifties? How old is he? Yeah, 40, 45. That's awesome, man. Yeah, forty-five. You know, and we just complement each other. We've done a lot of adventure stuff together. We did two, three months stints over in the Fiji Islands, helping his dad build a house in the tropical rainforest. <laughs> so, That's awesome, I mean, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so we've done all kinds of cool stuff, and it's it's the yeah. I'm like, it, what's funny? You know, because it's a. Um, Leatherback gear is a, uh, you know, bulletproof backpack, you know, so it's in the tactical world kind of thing. Um, the Hero Beverage Company, we trademarked the term hero, help everyone remain operational. All right. And then created the Hero Beverage Company. And the thing about you go to drinkhero.com and you buy coffee, we donate to one of the first responder groups on every bag of coffee that's sold. So everybody wins. Dude, you're amazing, man. I'm looking at your website, actually, Drink Hero. It's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, website. Who that website? Yeah, well, that's a, we have, we have, uh, uh, Brian Figueroa is his name. And he is like, he is like the meister of cool design. If you look at the packaging. Dude, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, so are you guys like, I've never even heard of this, but are you guys huge in no. like the first responder community? Well, the, the, uh, the backpack company has been up and live for, uh, four years. All right. And then the, the, the hero concept initially started as a marketing for the backpack company. And then we <coughs> found out through a series of serendipity about, uh, the coffee business. And we went, Wait a minute. We're all about supporting heroes you know, because of the COVID thing two years ago. <coughs> so we started working on a concept a year and a half ago and then, uh, and then we launched and we're, we are the official coffee of the national, uh, the Washington nationals baseball team. Wow. Yeah. 
That's we have, awesome, man. We're, we're, and we're in a process right now of discussions uh, to do uh, uh, different vignettes during the baseball games because they I mean because they're in Washington, they were holding, you know, hero days. So they just, you know, kind of like what we did kind of thing. And we're, we're in a dozen of those kind of conversations. So Dude, that's amazing. Well, I want to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you about that off air when this podcast yeah. ends. All right. Yeah. Let me, uh, let me put up your stuff here real quick. Um, Dr. Stephen Bazal, you are an amazing human being. And I really appreciate you coming on this podcast. Um, really we talked about so many different things. We didn't really stay on course of like your bullet points, but we talked about a lot of things, but what would you just your final thoughts, but like, what would you really want to convey to people who watch the show? And, you know, I have a lot of people, thankfully, I'm very blessed from all different walks of life that watch this. So like kind of what would you just your final thoughts, like to people, you know, to really manifest their highest and best life? You know, what I found in, and I, you know, I guess, you know, as we continue to evolve, what, what that looks like for me is, goes to that blog there, the glo globalmedicineman.com. If, if your folks go there, my most recent article is entitled Emotional Healing, The Missing Link in Most People's Life. And I genuinely believe that, is that the, the rate limiting factor or the impediment to most people reaching whatever it is they want to create for themselves has to do with the unresolved emotional business from the past. All right. And then along with that, let me let me throw something out that I should have thrown out at the very beginning. And that is the for anybody on the podcast, um, if you go to my website, the www.drbazal.com and then actually the landing page for the book so you can get a better feel for the book. If you want to buy it, that's wonderful. You know, if not, uh, scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page. All right. Uh, send me a note. And as a follow up to this discussion and to healing, I have a. I have a, uh, oh, it's, I, th I think it's a 24 pager on the 10 principles of healing, a practical guide to what that, what that would look like that I'd be glad to either send it to you or I'll send you a link to it. So, so yeah, I'll put that, that, well, I'll put that link in the discussion, um, when this podcast run, but I'm actually looking at it right now. It's very cool. Uh, okay. who's, who's the lady in the picture with you? Oh, isn't that your wife? <laughs> <laughs> you wish brew no no i saw i saw you know unfortunately i didn't meet her because you know we were talking and she was distracted getting sold uh yeah, she was but but anyway no she's she's absolutely gorgeous thanks you know, man you're, no you're no, no, awesome. no i mean I, there was uh, you you were like doing a stretch i think with like a look like an asiatic woman is that just a model that you were working with on that page or is that not actually no. you no, no, no. That's not. No, that's not me. That's the. Oh, that actually looks like you. That's crazy. You mean that woman on the on the cover? No, the guy. It looks yeah. like you stretching. Is that not you? The four realizations. Oh, you know, you're on my. Yeah, no, that's me. That's me. Yeah, that's yoga, what I thought. I was like, Jesus, dude, yeah. that guy's your doppelganger. Yeah, no, 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 no. He is no. But uh, the the cover the the cover of the book. You know what I do is the uh if i'm at a book signing and a lady gets that she goes who's on the cover i go wait uh -huh. i think that's, so that's you. your wife yeah that's a great <laughs> answer you. yeah yeah that's so, awesome anyways yeah no well listen man like i said uh we'll talk in a second off air but uh thank you so much for coming on the show so guys and gals if you've listened to this amazing person speak on this podcast which i would be imagine that you have if you're still listening to me speak right now at this point support him support his work i mean go pick up the book go to his website drbazal.com. You can pick him up on social media, of course, too, though. Globalmedicineman.wordpress.com is his blog, which he just talked about, the healing blog that he just wrote about. So go there, pick up the book, order the book. Like I said, I'm going to be sending out an email to a lot of you guys very soon about the book and, you know, just kind of my ruminations of and my summary of it. But uh, Doc, again, honor, man. Thank you so much for coming on. You have been amazing. So again, guys, remember, raise your vibration to optimize your if love I, creation. If I can throw in one, the one more thing, the, I still do consulting in corporate America. Wow. Uh, in both those spaces. And it's, it's all about human relationships at a very fundamental core level. How would people, so they can so just message you through the other way. Is there another way yeah. for them to reach you in that way? Well, Steve at Dr. Bazal.com. S T E V at Dr. Bazal.com. Doc, I will talk to you in a second. Guys, again, love and light. We will see you guys very soon. Thank you.